in this presentation uh, we will discuss the differential diagnosis of white refraction from inside the eye leukocoria uh, my name is Hisham Khairi uh, I work at Ain Shams University and I, I thank you for watching and uh, I have the privilege uh, to present this to you. Leukocoria or the white reflection from, from the eye, this presentation uh, can be uh, seen primarily by uh, obstetrician uh, giving birth uh, to uh, a pregnant mother or the uh, pediatrician uh, following up children this white pupil or leukocornea or white reflex from inside the eye can be uh, caused by congenital cataract, by Coats disease, by retinopathy of prematurity, by familial exudative vitroretinopathy, by infection, inflammation, infection, by parasites like Toxoplasma toxocara, by congenital uh, abnormalities or uh, with uh, like per persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous uh, uh, by failure of fusion of the branchial uh, arches in areas inside the eye or or uh, like choroidal coloboma hamartomas uh, like tuberous sclerosis retinal detachment uh, or vitreous, old vitreous hemorrhage with organization can be the same picture and there are several other causes then we can talk about leukocoria in terms of uh, stationary leukocoria like cataract uh, uh, tubers sclerosis a persistent fetal, fetal vasculature, a coloboma, myelinated nerve fibers, uh, persistent hyperplastic primary vitreous, benign tumors uh, uh, that very slowly grow. So it is questionable what what to say stationary here or not. Any any kind of anomalies that gives a white reflex coming outside of the eye. One of the examples is morning glory syndrome, optic nerve anomaly. Uh, something like Norris disease, we can put it more with the, we can, can become remittent and then it can be activated and complicate and progress at any age. So uh, maybe we, uh, it is debatable whether to put it in stationary. And causes of pseudo leukocoria, uh, like corneal opacities, uh, endothelial, uh, congenital endothelial uh, defects, uh, anomalies like Peter anomaly, uh, or progressive, also benign tumors, especially vascular tumors that leak and uh, there is lipid exudation and malignant tumors organized vitreous hemorrhage which can progress to uh, retinal uh, detachment inflammatory uh, like uh, inf uh, parasitic nematode uh, toxocara granuloma or uh, sepsis with endogenous uh, endophthalmitis especially in immunosuppressed uh, patients, also vascular malformations, an example, 
uh, racimus retinal artery aneurysm in which uh, the uh, uh, vitreous hemorrhage can occur. Metabolic deposition uh, coats disease uh, with the exudation. Retinopathy pyromaturity can progress and familial exudative retinopathy can progress. White pupil or leukocoria was called amarotic. Uh, one of the top of the list is the, uh, the diagnosis of retinoblastoma, uh, which is a, a malignant tumor arising uh, from retinal precursor cells. It can present with a white reflex from the eye or leukocoria. It can present, especially if it's involving the central, the posterior pole or the macular region by squint, it can present uh, as glaucoma, uveitis, or extraocular extension, or orbital extension with proptosis, or uh, uh, extension by the cere cerebrospinal fluid, or uh, invasion of bone mass. So retinoblastoma, which is the malignant tumor, is one of the most serious. Uh, it can threaten life. I see another serious cause of leukocoria white pupil is endogenous endophthalmitis. Uh, also serious causes, the causes that cause permanent loss. So history is very important but not reliable in isolation of findings from the clinical examination. Uh, we should explore the history of present illness. How did the illness uh, begin? The age at onset? Uh, we can, you can get some clues. So the, the, the age of onset of a diagnosis like cause disease usually at five years of age, while the retinoblastoma is much younger like uh, one and a half years of age. The duration of the, uh, what is, was present since birth, did appear after birth. Uh, we can also review while listening to the parents or to the patient, uh, photographs, series of photographs, older photographs, uh, more recent photographs, and, she, and uh, look at the red reflex in these photographs. Uh, other symptoms include, we, can, we should ask about pain, photophobia, redness, uh, squinting, blurred vision. Also past ocular history, uh, we should ask about uh, if uh, the, uh, the baby was full term, was delivered by normal delivery by cesarean section, what was the management of the newborn after birth? How what how much uh, was his weight or her weight? Also, if there was birth trauma significant, uh, or uh, all these birth trauma can can cause a corneal problem, cataract, retinal touch, vitreous hem. Also, we should ask about uh, the systemic, any systemic associations like joint swelling, joint pain, redness, uh, red eye repeatedly or chronic uh, injection of the eye. Uh, if there was prenatal or mother infection while the 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 newborn or the baby was intrauterine, uh, like toxoplasmosis, uh, rubella, cytomegalovirus, herpes simplex. Uh, we should uh, try to uh, see, uh, ask about uh, social habits, uh, the presence of animals or pets, and what type of animal or pet around uh, the mother or the baby or the child. 
and as uh, we we should ask the f about any skin conditions uh, redness papules hyperpigmentation discoloration and uh, any history of uh, treatment by uh, like uh, uh, tuberculosis or tumor or sepsis also, family history uh, about uh, the, how many brothers or sisters does the patient or the child with leukocoria have and do, were they examined and uh, what was the result of their examination? Is there a family history of some uh, similar disease? As we know, the retinoblastoma is, uh, uh, can be autosomal dominant with uh, incomplete penetrance uh, but ha uh, however only 10 percent of the patients or nearly 10 percent have family history also familiar vitro retinopathy can have a family history or uh, but however uh, some of the uh, the family affected family members can be asymptomatic also, coloboma has been reported to have some uh, autosomal dominant inheritance. Chromosome 11. Uh, the clinical the, leukocoria, especially the very serious cause, are mainly as when it is concerned with diagnosis, is a clinical diagnosis. Investigations are important for uh, treatment planning and follow-up uh, and sometimes for confirming the diagnosis but it's mainly a clinical diagnosis we should not about uh, the laterality if it's unilateral or bilateral uh, you, uh, retinoblastoma is unilateral in about 60 percent cause disease is usually unilateral uh, persistent fetal vasculature, toxocariasis, vitreous hemorrhage and sentiment are usually unilateral. However, 40% of uh, retinoblastomas can be bilateral, familiar exists, vitreotinopathy, retinopathy prematurity, uh, tuberous astrocytic, astrocytic uh, hematoma, uh, endogenous endophthalmitis can be bilateral. And in, in very selected codes disease, when there is, it's part of a syndrome uh, called fasciocapillohumeral dystrophy. Uh, we should uh, see the, the, if the reflexes it's white or it is yellow. We, uh, we yellowish reflex can can push us a small distance from retinoblastoma towards coach disease, especially with unilateral. Blue-gray pupils can be with congenital. Uh, magnetic resonance imaging uh, is performed especially in bilateral retinoblastoma cases uh, because the a small percentage about three to six percent may have uh, some tumor uh, near the pineal gland intracranial tumor uh, we uh, to detect the affection of optic nerve uh, orbital affection uh, it appears eye zoo to eye hyper intense on T1 weighted and hypotense on uh, T2 in the MRI. Uh, unlike Coach disease, which appears at hyper intense resubretinal exit, uh, toxic ocular toxicariasis uh, appears as iso intense T1 and hyper intense. So the diagnosis is mainly clinical. The investigations are important to, um, to confirm, There's like to detect calcium on ultrasound or see, to measure the dimensions, 
the height, the base, the volume, uh, so to give us a, a plan for uh, the treatment plan and also follow up. Also, we, should, we use the investigations to detect for systemic associations uh, that uh, can uh, give us and the management. So here is we, we, when we see a patient with leukocoria, we should uh, note, is it unilateral? Is it bilateral? Uh, uh, reported literature using uh, smartphones and uh, comparing different types of smartphones to detect uh, leukocoria. Here is, as you see, a little bluish gray, uh, which may, uh, this is close up. So we look at distance at the look Korea, and then we look, we come nearer, and then we uh, take a look at the cornea, the anterior chamber, uh, the uh, iris lens diaphragm, if there are any evident zonules, uh, change in color has a pattern, if the lens is small and uh, we here we can see uh, it can, uh, if the zonules are, uh, are appearing, it might uh, give us the impression that uh, this is a persistent hyperplastic The color, then uh, uh, using uh, 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 20 diopter or a 28 diopter lens, we can uh, see through the dilated pupil uh, the, inside the eye. Here the, we see a moderately elevated endophytic retinolosoma in the right eye of a 16 months old child. Or we can see that there is some organization and there is a vitreous hemorrhage with the flat retina. Here this four year old child whose mother had noted a white reflex coming out of his eye uh, two days earlier uh, she presented uh, with this child who has a visual acuity uh, about six nine and somewhat irregular when uh, with f f dilated fun retinal examination or fundus examination show a regular regular whitish lesion over with overlying vessels uh, and the lesion is about 10 times 12 times 7 millimeter, and uh, the provisional diagnosis was unilateral sporadic exophytic. Why do we say exophytic? Because the vessels are on the surface. Also, uh, other causes that can we say uh, are retinal attachment. This can may be rigmatogenous, exudative like in retinopsperm maturity or tractional, also in retinopsperm maturity and other diagnoses. Uh, in contrast, while examining from, uh, we can find that the cornea has some precipitates and there may be flare and cells in the anterior chamber and uh, 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 fibrin a membrane in the pupil, there may be hypopion, there may be cataract, uh, ciliary injection, and when we look at the rest of the body, we find a swollen joints or signs of uh, sepsis of uh, 
So we look first uh, uh, at the eye movement, the squint or not, whether the look Korea is bilateral or unilateral. Then we take a closer look. We examine the anterior chamber, the depth uh, contains uh, the iris pupil uh, lens uh, the, uh, diaphragm or plane, uh, the intraocular pressure, the corneal diameter. He's, as you can see here, uh, this uh, the the child the mother was giving child that this ch the, the history that this uh, newborn uh, was born uh, early uh, and as you can see uh, which 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 is uh, occurs with retinopathy maturity that the the iris lens the, diaphragm or plane is uh, displaced forward and the anterior chamber is very shallow might be lost uh, on, in contrast this is deep anterior chamber but there are whitish deposits fluffy like whitish material uh, which may uh, signify uh, that the, this are malignant cells uh, that have been uh, uh, there coming from a retina. Uh, this, this to just remind us uh, about how the eye was developed. Uh, there was the optic vesicle. Uh, the surface ectoderm, the lens separated from this six, uh, surface ectoderm. Uh, and here is the optic vesicle uh, formed by neural ectoderm. Uh, and then neural crest cell migration. side with leukocoria uh, and uh, a region related to the optic nerve inferior nasal to the optic disc uh, in this right eye of the 10 year old girl uh, was discovered uh, the leukocoria was in the left eye with traumatic retinal detachment This gelatinous lesion in her right eye uh, showed small, multiple small white areas, which may be calcium, measuring four millimeters in diameter, one millimeter in height. P scan shows dense areas within the mass that indicate calcification. So this is a lesion uh, found on uh, what was called cursory examination of the other eye of a patient with a, a, a retinal detachment. Visual acuity is near normal, at about uh, six uh, over nine. And there is a family history of retinoblastoma. So this might be a spontaneously regressed retinoblastoma, or might be a retinocytoma. So in retinoblastoma, all cases are subject to systemic evaluation, history, examination of the opposite eye, external ocular examination, indirect ophthalmoscopy, and find us photography. So in direct ophthalmoscopy, we look at the central retina, we look at the mid, mid peripheral retina, we note if the vessels are on the surface of the tumor or dipping into the tumor, is it exophytic, endophytic, Diffuse, infiltrating, we look at the fovea and the macula, we look nasal to the disc, temporal to the disc, and we do some indentation uh, for the, at the ora serrata, at the periphery. Here, as you can note, 
And this is indentation near the orus rata where a small tumor is found and at this stage it can be treated using multiple methods with very good results. Uh, if we, if the lesion is suspicious, is it a regress or regress? We can do follow up, take measurements, photography, ultrasound, and see if there is a documented uh, significant growth or stability of the tumor. Uh, we can use transformation to if in areas where, where if the pupil is not readily dilated and as we say the the investigations are for confirmation of presence of calcium for measurement for follow-up for treatment plan showing the high reflectivity of calcium within the tumor uh, fluorescein and is not a must computer tomography uh, for also detection of calcium, for extra spread, optic nerve involvement, uh, brain uh, lesion, uh, some uh, uh, it can be uh, mentioned that uh, we don't like to uh, expose the child multiple times to X-ray radiation, so we can use magnetic resonance imaging instead. In the uh, if you suspect metastasis. Systemic test because of the treatment plan, we can take a bone marrow biopsy, uh, examine the optic nerve in the inoculated eye, uh, and do some other tests to examine. These are historical tests the alpha fetoprotein, the carcinobronchial antigen, uh, lactase dehydrogenase, and anterior chamber. They're uh, not used. Uh, treatment is either we uh, preventive for siblings, early treatment uh, with local therapy, cryotherapy for small anterior tumors, vasodilation for anterior posterior tumors, uh, radioactive uh, uh, plaques, brachytherapy, uh, or chemotherapy, or inoculation, cosmetic after inoculation. Here, if the case is inoculation and as this stage E tumor filling more than half of the eye uh, with a small visual potential of the eye and a high risk for uh, uh, progression in spite of chemotherapy and local therapy and the eye is sectioned measured optic nerve condition is uh, recorded so here is an example for a case uh, uh, of the soma and during the chemo reduction and then getting uh, the the tissues become uh, translucent the calcium appears and the tumor is steep up with using the dimensions also, we can use chemo reduction combined with transpropylary thermotherapy. And as we can see here, here was the tumor and some laser marks around it during, uh, after, just after the transpropylary thermotherapy session with chemo reduction. And here the flat score. All, uh, also, uh, more recently, there is a selective cannulation of the ophthalmic artery uh, here is the, the catheter is introduced uh, via the limb or the hand uh, into the internal carotid artery then passes to the ostium of the ophthalmic artery the dye is injected to make sure here is the the eye shadow and then uh, the carboplatin or melphalan or uh, uh, certain drugs can be um, uh, injected in a pulsed manner inside the ophthalmic artery to uh, g deliver of chemotherapy. 
Uh, here we see a mass located in Fury in the left eye of a 25 year old woman. The patient had noted blurred vision in this eye for approximately two weeks. She had born, pre she was born prematurely, prematurely at which uh, time she received supplemental oxygen. Uh, the visual acuity is uh, 2100. Uh, a little bit uh, better than uh, 636. Uh, it was diagnosed as acquired retinal capillary meningioma associated with retinopathy. So, what about retinopathy maturity? What we'll see if we get a closer up, closer look. We'll see the retina, vascularized retina, and then might see a ridge which separates the vascularized retina with non-vascular retina. So the vessels, it seems that they didn't grow, the, the growth of the vessels into the peripheral retina was arrested at a certain point, and there is shunting here in this ridge. And we note the vessels for something called plus disease. If the vessels are tortuous and engorged or not. What about cause disease? Cause disease usually uh, can occurs more in males, more uh, usually unilateral. So this is uh, uh, leukocoria in the left eye of four year old boy. Uh, during examined, uh, notice during the routine examination, the visual acuity is 2200, 20, uh, and uh, when the fundus exemption was seen, we found subretinal exudation or lipid or cholesterol deposition, uh, mainly at the macula, but also elsewhere. And if we look at the peripheral vessels, see. Abnormal, so we have to look at the periphery. Here, subretinal exudates in another case. Then we look at the periphery, the peripheral vessels. So we might see that in the normal caliber connections. Here is the fluorescein to show, uh, to demonstrate more uh, this areas of capillary non-perfusion and leakage and telangiectatic vessels. So it, it, macular exudation is typical of this condition. However, macular exudation also can be seen in retina. Also, this is a macular uh, subretinal exudation near the macula. Here is the stupor screws. Uh, last picture was an artist's drawing. This picture is for, for, taken from a lefty, uh, left eye of an eight-year-old girl with a retinal mass who was seen for routine examination with two slightly elevated, almost translucent astrocytic hematomas in the superior term, at the superior temporal arcade. These are small, so sometimes they appear very small as six hematomas uh, with a typical vasculature and they must be differentiated from retinoblastoma. We take a look at the patient as a whole, so we might see uh, abnormalities in the skin near the noses, around the mouth. Uh, uh, especially as the child grows older. So tuber screws is the is, the, is uh, the tuber screws one with defective gene tuber uh, gene product. The tuber screws is gene product. One gene product is a protein called hamartin. Hamartine interacts with tuberin, and these together help control cell growth. 
they act as tumor suppressor gene. This interaction between hamartine and tuberine uh, acts as tumor suppression genes controlling a wide variety of other proteins that promote rapid cell growth and division. So this is the normal cell. In the abnormally mutated TSC1, so it produced non-functional hamartine, which does not interact with the tuberine and control cell growth. So these cells uh, divide in an uncontrolled manner uh, as hamartomas, forming hamartomas, a tumor size, both in the eye and systemically. So uh, for tuberous sclerosis, <clears throat> we need to differentiate between tuberous sclerosis and retinoblastoma. So we use uh, diagnostic criteria, there are major features and minor features, and uh, this is a comprehensive list uh, which shows the facial angiofibromas that we saw in the uh, picture before last, and uh, their uh, periangle uh, fibromas around the nail, hypomelanotic macules, especially if they're more than three, shagreen patches, retinal nodular hamartomas, uh, intracranial uh, uh, growths, cardiac rhabdomyoma, lymphangiomatosis, renal angiolipomas, minor features uh, they can f change in the, in the teeth, rectal polyps, bone cysts, and other features. So the, just to know the frequency of these, how, how often we see them when you see a patient with a retinal, a suspected retinal astrocytoma, so hypomelanotic macules in nearly 90%, epilepsy, history of epilepsy in 90%, uh, the uh, subependymal nodules, uh, facial angiofibromas in about 75%. So to help us, the cases here, the investigation showing uh, these abnormalities in the chest, in the, uh, in the intracranial, in the kidneys. So peripheral uh, retinal sick hematomas in, this, in the right eye of this two-year-old black girl with tuberous sclerosis. Uh, she noticed the dark fundus uh, associated with her dark skin and uh, the lesions which with open arrows are sessile, translucent, slightly elevated. Uh, the lesions with well-defined margins here also. So intravenous angiography shows the elevated lesions are slightly vascularized and leak dye during the later phases. So, uh, associated hamartomas are most frequently seen in patients with tuberous sclerosis. which can also be seen in associated But another picture on elevated associated hamartoma with a white mass nasal to the right optic disc of this 24-year-old asymptomatic woman with tuberous sclerosis. Uh, mean asymptomatic mean visual, visually concerning ophthalmological uh, examination. The hamartoma is white, mulberry-like, and measures two by two uh, millimeters with uh, one millimeter height. And also superior, there is a small flat lesion. The visual acuity is uh, near normal at about six over This is in contrast to Whitish lesion related to the optic disc, the vessels, uh, part of the vessels are over, inside, uh, under this, which makes us uh, think about myelinated nerve fibers in this.
So retinopathy prematurity, it affects low birth weight premature infants, can lead to blindness. The incidence of retinopathy prematurity has increased with uh, better management of preterm pre uh, uh, children. Uh, the, the feature is that there is a vascularized retina, non-vascularized retina. There is a, a, a zone that separates this with abnormal uh, anastomotics, uh, anastomos or uh, interconnections between the veins and the arteries. There might be tortuous vessels, which is called plus disease, significant, uh, signifying that it is very active. So the risk is uh, for children born before 32 weeks, especially before 30 weeks, uh, for children born with weight, birth weight less than 1,500 grams, especially less than uh, 12, uh, 1,250 grams, uh, possible risk factors include supplemental oxygen hypoxemia, hypercarbia. So these are stages of the disease early. There is vascularized, non vascularized. Then there is the ridge, elevated ridge. There is plus disease. Then if the patient is treated with uh, cryo or laser ablation, uh, this might regress. In newborns with a risk of retinopathy prematurity, we should avoid exposing newborns to oxygen, we should do the, we should uh, have communication with the neonatal uh, care unit uh, and ha have a, an idea about what treatment uh, these children have, oxygen therapy they take and provide timely and regular eye examinations to high-risk infants. So we should avoid failing to diagnose uh, the retinopathy prematurity uh, at an early stage when symptoms of this condition are clearly present. And we should avoid to fail to promptly uh, treat uh, the diagnosed prematurity. So there are some guidelines if the child is born between 23 and 24 weeks of pregnancy or post-conceptual, then the follow-up starts between the third and the fourth week following birth. If the child is born between 25 and 28 weeks of pregnancy, then follow-up starts between the fourth and fifth week of birth. When the child is born between 29 and 30 weeks of pregnancy then the child is, is examined just before uh, the child is discharged from the hospital Sub subsequently regular eye examination should be performed every six months as are vulnerable to a glaucoma myopia and other ocular disease here, this uh, child which who presented with uh, leukocoria, uh, when a closer examination through a dilated pupil was done for the three old year old, in the isotropia, the child has an ex uh, uh, has this lesion with. Uh, with a connection to the disc seems to be like as if it's dragged towards this granuloma or lesion. Uh, the history uh, shows that the, there was contact with uh, dogs and uh, an ELISA test was done for the serum and uh, uh, to uh, exclude toxicaracanis and was positive. So that the vision in this eye is limited to fixing and following objects. 
Presentations of Toxicara, here are examples of other presentations, presenting pictures of Toxicara with uh, uh, posterior juveitis. Posterior juveitis, granulomas, tagging of the disc, subretinal condition. So the signs are more usually more pronounced than the symptoms. Uh, pain, photophobia are usually minor or absent. Uh, slit lamp examination reveals mild to moderate spillover anterior chamber reaction with scattered keratic precipitates. Uh, uh, sometimes posterior sinusitis. So diagnosis okay, is often a clinical diagnosis, history taking, exposure to animals, especially puppies, dilated fundus examination, serum is in failure, suggestive of infection, uh, but is usually only present in, in cases of active infection, uh, can be detected is in fields in aqueous or vitreous flow. This is for research purposes and uh, antitoxicar antibodies, uh, but are in, it's not a very sensitive test, uh, so uh, proof sensitivity can be achieved by using the ELISA of uh, analysis of intraocular fluid in enzyme linked immunosorbent assay of intraocular fluid. Also, B scan ultrasonography, optical sonography, this pathology uh, are tools. Another, so Korean tag this can be caused by pedal conditions characterized by abnormal development of retinal blood vessels. Uh, strategy to help diagnose is evaluation of the fellow eye, is it unilateral or bilateral? Direct examination, white field angiography. Uh, so we can uh, differentiate between different types. In the case of uh, family existence of retinopathy, White field uh, fluorescein and uh, fundus examination uh, might show us an, an asymptomatic family member in many cases. Also, genetic testing can help, mm -hmm. like in case of uh, familial exotic retinopathy, uh, there is uh, uh, a number of genetic. Uh, defects that can be helpful in confirming diagnosis. Uh, in early stages, uh, family exists of vitreal function is generally followed up and observed. Uh, and if the blood vessels at one uh, at a follow up or a session show that they are leaking. Uh, then uh, we can uh, perform laser <laughs> for the non-perfused areas and uh, uh, uncommonly we, we might need relief traction. Also, uh, a differentiation between family exhibitability and toxicara is that toxicara has, has, might have a significant component of your posterior uveitis. Another cause for leukorrhea like this is Norris disease, which is associated with excellent mutations of the Norris disease protein, and it's, it has some ocular manifestations, but also has systemic conditions of progressive deafness and cognitive decline. Also, another cause is osteoporosis pseudoglioma syndrome, which is characterized by reduced bone mineralization, resulting in increased risk of bone fractures in childhood, along with ocular familial exhibitive vitreotinopathy-like presentation. 
also uh, hypotonia and uh, cognitive decline may be present. Another condition that can cause the leukocorrhea drug death is incontinentia pigmenti, which is an X-linked ectodermal dysplasia with uh, characteristic uh, red, uh, red nail changes. There can be nail lines, nail uh, deformities. There might be vesicular bullous uh, skin changes. There might be uh, characteristic mm -hmm. patterns of pigment change. Rare causes of leukocoria can include a choroidal stoma, a large choroidal stoma. Here in this asymptomatic 31 year old woman with 6 6 vision, a lesion inferior to the disc, well delineated yellow choroidal mass. This is show uh, some clinical uh, ultrasound, fluorescein, and optical coherence tomography, and uh, magnetic resonance imaging or X-ray imaging. Uh, differences between choroidal osteoma, choroidal metastasis, choroidal melanoma, and choroidal hemangioma. So for this lesion of choroidal osteoma in this 31-year-old woman, intravenous fluorescence shows hyperfluorescence, just inferior to the disc. And B scan, uh, we we can v uh, do a B scan with moderately high gain and low gain, and so uh, try to demonstrate if there is calcium, uh, which if is, uh, in case of presence is consistent with the diagnosis. Of Also, uh, a cause of leukorrhea can be retinal capillary hemangioma. Uh, however, retinal capillary hemangiomas do not always cause leukorrhea uh, because some are uh, localized small peripapillary, some are localized peripheral. Sometimes they are multiple or solitary. And in case they are associated with exudation, uh, retinal attachment, they may cause leukocoria. Uh, characteristically, uh, there might be a feeder vessel and uh, systemic associations uh, were described by uh, Von Heppel and Lindau in a multi system disorder uh, such as uh, uh, renal. Uh, uh, hemangiomas, uh, spinal, cerebellar, hemangiomas, freochromocytoma, multiple renal and pancreatic cysts, and endolymphatic sac tumors associated with uh, retinal capillary hemangioma. And forming the von, Lip uh, von Hippel and Dow syndrome. So here is the capillary hemangioma, a composite picture showing the peripheral capillary hemangioma, feeder vessel uh, in this 15-year-old girl, which appeared to have a family history of one hippel angiomas, uh, and visual acuity is uh, reduced uh, to about 6 over 18, owing to 
intravenous fluorescein and Jeffrey shows permanent dilated finger arteriole and dye leakage from the tumor in the study. Another clinic picture that the patient may have multiple small capillary hemangiomas and might be bilateral. Uh, these are composed of small capillary vessels lined with endothelial cells of accumulated astrocytes. And uh, a systemic examination is very important. On the other hand, retinal cavernous hemangioma uh, is not usually associated with exudation or leaks, but can be complicated by vitreous hemorrhage with organization and the picture of leukocoria. Also, in few cases, hyphema was reported with. Also, another very rare benign or slowly growing osphagic tumors, typically affects young women, uh, orange, uh, yellow, and oval lesion, well defined scalp geographical borders, most commonly peripapillary at the posterior, uh, posterior pole with diffuse modeling of retinal pigment epithelium. And it's by rather than 25% of cases, and this is called choroidal osseous choristoma. Here is a 26-year-old white man who has experienced blurred vision. From this eye for two months, the visual acuity is 6, uh, 12. The anterior segment of both eyes are unremarkable. Fundus examination revealed the large spear lesion of the choroid in the left eye. Uh, this uh, with overlying subretinal fluid with two small yellow Choroidal lesion superior to the optic disc. So main lesion and two small lesions. And the uh, investigation uh, showed that this is probably a sarcoid granuloma. So the intravenous angiography showed early hypofluorescence of the tumor uh, and then increase in fluorescence as the dye pools. Another rare cause of uh, leukocoria is the combined hamartoma of the retina and retinal pigment epithelium, uh, which can be uh, associated with neurofibromatosis. In, uh, in this 29-year-old uh, man who has a lesion since childhood, uh, with uh, docked vision, counting finger vision in this eye, and uh, as you find this examination, so, so shows the vessels, if retinal changes uh, are a superior fold of the intervention. And this is the fluorescein angiography, shows uh, leakage, late leakage. So leukocoria can be uh, diagnosed uh, presenting as leukocoria or can be associated with squint. Uh, so we can put in mind the other causes of squint in the differential diagnosis. Leukocoria can be associated with glaucoma. So we have to exclude both salmus and glaucoma. Uh, Leukocoria can present uh, as a complication of uveitis. So we have in the differential diagnosis the cause of uveitis and the end of thalmitis, including parasitic, uh, like nematode uh, end of thalmitis or uveitis. So real causes of um, infectious cause of leukocoria is something like this case of which presented with a white pupil and in closer examination uh, there is anterior chamber reaction, keratic prostates and 
a sexta sort of course the cyst with an evaginating scolex live uh, and if it releases the antigens might produce severe uveitis so um, it might be recommended to remove it uh, at this stage surgically through an anterior chamber also optic nerve uh, congenital defects like morning glory syndrome can cause Resistant in fetal vasculature, resistant hypoplastic primary vitreous, in which uh, the zonules are apparent and uh, there is uh, changes in the vitreous. Other pictures of persistent fetal primary vitreous, also vitreous opacities can cause leukocoria, which can be, uh, as we said, like organized with a hemorrhage called serial crystals. So leukocoria can also be associated with proptosis if there is a, a, a tumor or orbital invading the eye or intraocular lymphoma, leukemia, with orbital lymphoma, leukemia, or associated other orbital tumors. Also, leukocoria, leukocoria can present with metastasis as a part of a metastatic malignant tumor like retinoblastoma, hypernephroma, neuroblastoma, glioblastoma, leukemia, lymphoma. So communication with pediatrician in cases of uh, leukoria in a child is very important or uh, with uh, internal uh, medicine in case of older. Also, we said the leukocoria can be caused by organ vitreous hemorrhage. This organ vitreous may be traumatic, may be a blood disease, uh, bleeding tendency, may be leukemia, lymphoma, or may be a, a vascular lesion of the retina like cavernous hemangioma, racemous retinal aneurysm, retinal artery aneurysm. Uh, in, in which there is vitreous hemorrhage, or retinopathy prematurity can present as vitreous hemorrhage, or intraocular present as vitreous hemorrhage. So we have leukoria with systemic associations, which might be mental, cognitive, intracranial, muscular, dermal, lung, glands, joints, bone, or inflammatory uh, features, or isolated. Uh, I would thank uh, all uh, my colleagues who helped me uh, uh, gather these uh, slides of providing pictures and, and thank you very much.